We'll call the meeting to order at 401. And the first order of business is reorganization. Uh, so I believe that there is a nomination for chair needed. I nominate um, Maureen for chair. I second that. Um, do we have to vote individually for everything? Yep. Uh, the, the chair you have to vote, and then I believe it's appointments from there. Okay. Is so that right, Bob? All in favor? Aye. Yes. yes. Okay. And then for the rest, I just ask. Uh, so let's see. So Bob was the vice, was the vice chair, chair and secretary. I, uh, I was actually the secretary. Oh, well, it says Bob on there. Morning, um, you still want to stay with secretary? Is that okay? Well, I I was wondering if Beth would like to take that or vice chair, if one of you could take. I can take secretary if Bob would like to stay at vice. Is that good with you guys? Yes? Yes. Okay. And Frontier Rep, Bob? Yes, please. Okay. And then the Union 38 representatives, do we have to do that? I mean, that's... Is that for, I think that's for negotiations. Is that? No, that's a different thing. No, that's something okay. different. Um, so Bob, me, and Beth, because that's that's what we have, three. Yeah. And the, the collaborative, I'm still willing to do unless somebody wants that. Okay. You can have it. Don't okay. break down the door. <laughs> <laughs> I heard we got a new uh, whatever president. Yes, we or, did. Yeah, so that's, I know you'll say that to yep. us later, so. Um, capital planning committee, I'm I'm willing to still do that. And policy review committee, I can still do that. If anyone wants any of these, please speak up. Um, the sick bank committee has been, it's me and Bob last year. I don't think we've ever done anything for that, so. I'm still willing to do that. Yeah. How about you? Yep. And the negotiations team, you want to keep that, Bob? Yep. I like doing it. I think we'll be up. I think we'll be doing it next year, right, Shelly? I think, yeah. Okay. So do we need to do an overall vote for all of these? No, you disappointed. Okay, so you disappointed everybody. So appointed. I know you guys got a time schedule here too tonight. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Maureen, it's up to you to keep us moving then. Yep. Okay. So now we're on to the minutes. Um, review and approve the minutes of May 13th meeting. Do I hear a motion? I move oh. to approve the minutes. Second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay. And now we are on to the financial statement. Shelley. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Try to. Can you guys see that? Oh, I'm not at the top, though. It's coming in now. Okay. Can you make it a little? Yeah, thank you. That's better. Okay, so five warrants were reviewed and signed electronically, totaling $30,733.14. Uh, and I did share the general fund and school choice expense reports. Those were through May 31st. So if you have questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, if you look on the last page of that report, you'll see the available budget balance of around 121000 um, so some of that is associated with conservative purchasing. Um, oh, sorry, this is a new feature of Google Meet. Um, so because we had grants coming in from the state and we didn't know what was going to happen with the educational model, and then we had town support as well, we sort of used up all of those funds to get what we needed first. Um, and then 
went back to local budget. So we were pretty conservative, conservative on the general fund with our purchasing. We made sure that the school had everything that it needed, um, but you know we maybe held back a little bit in certain areas. Um, and then we had other budget savings from accounts that typically would be fully expended, such as transportation, professional development, and substitute coverage. You know, transportation was down because we renegotiated our contract. Uh, professional development was less than it would be in a typical year. You know, perhaps there weren't as many offerings for in-person things or people just didn't sign up. Um, and then substitute coverage, you know, Chrissy did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> she did a great job covering as a substitute, um, you know, working with her team and uh, getting what she needed to make sure that classes were covered without having to dip very much into that substitute line. So you couple those bigger expenses with, you know, tiny line items that might have five hundred or a thousand dollars left in them. And by the time you add that all up at the end of the day, you know, you're left with more money than we would normally have at this time of year. We do expect that that'll still be spent down some. Uh, there's some central office expenditures that need to be put in still. Um, I spoke with Chrissy about doing some additional purchasing for the school, things that we probably wouldn't normally be able to buy with the general fund, um, but we are gonna go ahead and do that. And then uh, also working with facilities to see if there's any facilities needed. Um, you know, getting, I think, a new, uh, what's it called, scrubber for the floor maybe, or getting an old one repaired, you know, making sure that if there are things like that, that we're taking care of them. So I expect that that 120 is going to drop down pretty significantly by the end of the year. Um, but what I am recommending is that over the next few weeks, after we look at those numbers, we move any unspent funds into school choice for future use. And the reason that I'm recommending that is twofold. One, if you remember, one of the reasons that our budget is as low as it is for FY22 is we took 15,000 off of the budget and put it on school choice to cover teacher retirement expense. And that helped us get under that 2.5%. Um, we also might have uh, some special education expenses that we didn't plan for. Um, the special education director had come to me last week or the week before saying that there was a possibility of an out of district placement. I understand that the team and the school and special department is going to try to work that out so that that doesn't happen. Um, but Karen felt like there might be some additional support services that need to be brought in for that student. Um, so that could be some extra money that we don't necessarily have budgeted that we could use the school choice funds for. <clears throat> we save this year's money for that. It'll help us out should that come to fruition. If not, it just helps build up our reserve. So unless you're opposed to that, that's what I'd like to move ahead with. Any questions on any of that before I keep going? This is what's left in the basically in the budget. And um, if you said something about putting the remainder into school choice afterwards. Correct. After all of our expenses are in for the year, my recommendation is to reclassify some expenses and put any of our savings from this year into school choice. But we can also, if it's in school choice, if we want to do some more classrooms, the floors in the classrooms and stuff, we could. Yeah, um, and we're talking actually about doing some of that right now. Um, right, Chrissy? Bill's working on some quotes for that uh, with some of the extra money. And then okay. we'll take that off of the capital list. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, the classroom floors, I took a quick look at the town warrants for next week's meeting, and it looks like those are on it even though they were voted a low priority. Yep. So if we use this money for that, then that they would just remove that warrant or? No, no. So we're saying leave that money on the town warrant. And then if we have additional money available of this 121,000, using some of that to do the next round of classrooms. So we okay. would pull that off for next year. We wouldn't necessarily be asking money for flooring next year. Of the town. Okay. It's just basically speeding up the process of, of that renovation. Good. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing other I saw on the town warrant is the parking lots due to get paved if it passes. Did you see that, yes, Chrissy? I did. Yeah, I, I saw it. I think it's just the it's the driveway and not the parking lot, as, as okay. I understand it. Okay. Does that include sidewalks? Do you know? I think the, I think the sidewalk's concrete. 
the it didn't say warrant. in the warrant. There was talk last year, I think this is what you're talking about, of putting a sidewalk down <clears> the driveway um, where, where there is now just a sort of dirt path. Um, and that was part of uh, something the town was looking into, um, some kind of grant, and that did not come through. So as far as I know, there's been no more talk about putting a sidewalk. Okay. At some point, I'd like to see that because for people walking down, it's they're in the road. Um, future yeah. thing. Yeah, that's why I have to, any kid who's riding their bike home, I walk them to wherever it is they're going. Okay, let's move All on. Right. So let's move on. I'll go quickly through the revolving funds. They're pretty self-explanatory. Not, not a lot to discuss here as far as I can see. Um, but looking at our school lunch fund, we started here with about 49000 our year-to-date revenue and then our estimated June is going to be just shy of 60000 um, I'm incredibly pleased with where we are and, and for bringing in that amount of revenue. You know, this time last year, we had no idea what the school year was going to look like and if we would have any revenue coming into school lunch. And it turns out that the government reimbursement is actually higher than what we would have been charging for cash sales. So now that kids are fully back in the building, April and May have really given us a good gauge into what we can bring in from the government reimbursement. So it's still lower than it would be in a typical year, but it feels really good to be where we're at right now, bringing in 60,000. Um, especially since we moved our payroll expenditures, we had put them to uh, the general fund for this year and kept them there, even though we had a significant revolving balance. Um, so that's allowing us to build up the surplus. So we're ending the year after our expenses about 25,000, we're ending around 80,000 to go into next year. Wow. Looking at next year, um, my projections are always conservative. I think we're going to well surpass the $65,000 number. Um, lunches will be free for all students again next year. The USDA extended that free meals for students. Um, so 65, again, is conservative, but, you know, gives us a good starting point, And then we can build from there. Um, our expenses is just our food and supply costs. We are going to pay for wages through the ESSER grant. So that's allowing us to build up our reserves. So our positive net income will roll into our start of year balance. So we're looking at ending 22 with just over $100,000, which is great news because the following year in fiscal year 23, when we no longer have the ESSER grant available, we can move wages back to the revolving fund. So we're going to be in a good spot as of right now, based on these projections for Waitley for the school lunch program. Um, we have a similar story to tell for early childhood. So we started with 71,000 in the revolving fund. Our revenue was significantly lower than it would be in a normal year because of limited enrollment. Um, and then our expenses, we because we had a positive starting balance, we were able to continue to um, pay for our salaries and wages. So while our net income is a significant negative number, we're still ending the year just shy of 20,000 going into next year. That's what we'll start with. Um, I want to say, Chrissy, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the last I checked, there was 17 students enrolled for next year. I think that's what Amy gave me for numbers. So we're looking at almost $100,000 in revenue. Um, and because the way we built the budget, not knowing what was going to happen with classrooms and paying expenses from the ESSER grant, our expenses are low. So we will have, I believe there's one IA being paid out of the revolving fund and then some supplies and materials. But for the most part, part it's going to be funded by the ESSER grant. So that'll allow us once again to build up this account so that for fiscal year 23, when we have to move expenses back over, we have a larger reserve to do that. So I feel like we're in really good shape. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can see you guys again. Uh, you know, like I said, where we were last June, not knowing what this year was gonna be bring, and even this fall, you know, not knowing if kids were gonna fully come back in the building. I think we're set up and we were really fiscally responsible in how we mapped out the use of these revolving funds. And going into next year, it feels like we're in a really good position. So I'm happy to take questions if you have them. I'm good. Okay, so now we're on to the public comment. I do have one written comment that was submitted that I'm going to read. Um, it doesn't look like we have a lot of public comments. I'm not sure if um, I see Holly's on, if she's going to give a comment. Um, if there was a lot, I was going to 
maybe see if we needed to limit the amount of time per comment. But let me get started on the one that was submitted. Um, it was submitted by Lou Vincent, Deerfield Inclusion Group. Dear school committee members and administrators, I would like to thank you for all your hard work and continuous commitment to our schools. I would also like to thank you for being receptive to explore, exploring and undertaking personal and professional development in relation to anti-racism and equity. As you know, our schools have made a commitment to addressing long neglected aspects of our systems and community in regard to equity and racism. Administrators, teachers, and parents are enthusiastically entering into self and community education and are developing a growing understanding of equity in the world and in our community. The Pathways Professional Development Plan put forth by fourth grade teacher, DES teacher, Jennifer Smith, presented to you at a recent school committee meeting, offers a thorough and thoughtful, and thoughtful avenue for community members to grow, to gain knowledge of self and systems, and to become a more educated person in our community. This is ongoing work for, for us all. This PD developed by Ms. Smith has been embraced at the elementary schools with the support of elementary administration curriculum director, Kim McCarthy, advisor to the FRSU 38 Anti-Racism and Equity Task Force, Amanda Mozia, and the Collaborative for Educational Services. As I am sure you are all aware, it is vital for school committee members to be educated, and up to date as to how best to serve our community. Many of you indicated at that school committee meeting that you would be interested in taking this PD. I applaud this intention. To follow up on Jennifer Smith's offer to you to take this professional development, I would like to offer my services and that of other Deerfield Inclusion Group DIG volunteers to act as collaborators and to assist you in traversing the PD. Aspects of the PD will best be done with small group participation, and DIG would like to offer our presence and support to do this PD with you and offer a type of buddy system as you work through it. Many DIG members have been actively working on issues of equity and anti-racism personally and professionally and provide a meaningful resource. DIG would be honored to partner with you in the work of equity and anti-racism, professional and personal development, recognizing the ongoing need for learning and community. <clears throat> I have been engaged in anti-racism work for 16 years. I am a co-founder of DIG and a parent to children of color in our school district. I am a former intern with the Collaborative for Educational Services a member of the Sunderland Human Rights Task Force, a member of the FRSU 38 Anti-Racism and Equity Task Force, sitting on the Policy and Procedures Committee, as well as a student at Mount Hoyle College, student working on a thesis on race, racism, and power. I understand, understand that doing the work of unpacking our own bias and examining parts of ourselves and our country's history can be deeply challenging. I would like to offer my support and availability to you this summer as you undertake this PD. I am proposing that we organize two or three sessions over this summer where school committee members and DIG members can meet to review how the PD is going, the process, questions, feelings, and just in general as a way to connect while doing this hard work. If school committee members are interested in this suggestion, I will be happy to facilitate a few days to make this happen. I look forward to connecting. Many thanks, Lou Vincent, Deerfield Inclusion Group. Okay, Holly, if you have a comment. Um, I really, hi, I'm, hi. I'm just on behalf of the PTO, I'm still the co-president of the PTO at Waitley. I just wanted to thank all of you school committee members and admin for your hard work this year. It's been a really hard year. I just want you to know that we appreciate it, um, all the hard decisions and all your hard work. And I just wanted to say thank you as we come to a close this year. That's thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you to the PTO. 
Yes. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for your hard work. You held us up and kept us moving forward. <laughs> and now it's over, right? Almost there. One more day. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not taking anything for granted until the last bus leaves tomorrow, the last student is in the car. I, I'm not taking anything for granted. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Um, now we're on the COVID-19 update, which I think Darius was going to give. Are you giving that, Shelly, or are we not getting that this month? So from the other meetings, he didn't really have anything to add from what I remember. Bob, I know you were at Frontier. I don't think he really gave much update there. He kept it on as a running item, but yeah. um, okay. there's also no anti-racism update for this meeting either. Okay. So then we are now on to early release Friday gap care fee, and that will have a vote. Um, I don't know. We did discuss it quite a bit at the last meeting. I'm not sure. I do see that um, they did take the suggestion that I think Beth gave to um, not charge a fee to those that will be in the after school program. And also, siblings will be charged $250 instead of $5. So, um, should we take a vote or does anyone have any questions or comments or any, anything to add? Okay. So Do moved. I hear so in a second? second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Then now we are on to the updated face covering policy, which will include a vote as well. And basically the only thing different with it, correct me if I'm wrong, is not wearing it outside. Is that true? That's, I'm just That's going what for what the other meetings and stuff. So if I imagine it might get updated again in the fall. Okay, so if there's no comments or questions, do, do we have um, a it's just Oh. I just want to be clear on yep. it. It's just that um, we'll just be following the Mass Department of Public Health and Department of Education. That's oh, with the revision, the yeah. other. Yes, that's right. I'm assuming that's it, and that because things might change, so we're going to follow their guidance. It does say during physical education classes that they don't have to wear a mask. Is that just when they're outside, Chrissy? I'm pretty sure that's what it is for outside. Because they've been doing it outside a lot. Yeah, we've had PE outside as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think like Shelly said, we're gonna hear more about masks before we right. come back to school. Yeah, we don't know what it is going into the fall at this point, right? right. The most right. And I, I know for summer programs, which are not actually at Waitley, right? They're at Deerfield, but it'll be the same policy. If they're in the building, they have to have a mask on. If they're outside, they don't have to have the mask on. The most recent change was that they added staff to the no mask outside. Because for a while, it was just kids could be unmasked outside. Oh. But the adults had to keep the masks on. So that was kind of a, a big day here. For, yes, I imagine it is. As we moved into the 95 degree weather. OK, so if there's no more questions or comments, do I hear a movement? So moved. Second. All in favor of the updated policy? Aye. Aye. OK, great. Um, now we are on to the revised non-union personnel handbook. OK, I'm going to share my screen again with you. Um, so the first thing that I will say is that this handbook um, will replace the handbook that was from 2014. Uh, that's when it was last revised for the elementary schools. Um, and the reason for this change is, you know, when I first started, this was one of the things I, I began with was reviewing existing personnel policies. And first of all, the handbooks formatting wise and things like that were a little bit of a mess. Um, do you want me to make this bigger? Please. Uh, and then the other thing that we noticed and, and Darius acknowledged like, yeah, you're absolutely right, but we couldn't figure out why the frontier handbook and the union handbook were very different. So this is for folks in categories such as custodial, um, secretary, and um, 
cafeteria staff. So the frontier secretary was receiving different benefits than the um, Waitley secretary. So we wanted to create equity amongst the positions and make the benefits more even and fair, even though they're at different schools. Workload is different, volume of kids is different, volume of work is different, but essentially they're still performing the same job. So it didn't necessarily make sense to us why the benefits were different. Um, so the first thing that we looked at was the job classification, and that's one of the mo biggest updates. Uh, the Frontier Handbook was a little bit different than Union, where it listed out superintendent secretary, guidance secretary, um, central office administrator secretary, and the, the descriptions were really specific. It almost felt like it was built around people and not necessarily a true job classification. So we updated the job classifications to represent the work year. So we have 10 month, 12 month, and then 10 month plus. And the 10 month plus job classification, those folks might work an extra 10 days, whether it's five at the beginning of the year and five at the end of the year. Um, so they work a little bit more than the 10 months. So all of the benefits are now based on a 10 month or a 12 month employee. And then for our hiring requirements, we updated those so that all of the policies we have to sign off on annually are included in there. Um, that includes you know, the sexual harassment policy, um, the technology use, those kind of things. And then the, the handbooks were so outdated that the fingerprinting requirement wasn't in there either. So we added that piece in. Uh, the holidays, we added Juneteenth. If it is approved, that's coming up on the agenda to vote on. We added that as a paid holiday, assuming that it will go through. If it doesn't go through at all schools, we'll pull that out where applicable. Uh, but that will be a paid holiday for 12-month personnel. And then the vacation and the sick time for union employees were some of the largest discrepancies between Frontier. And again, it didn't make sense that the custodian here wasn't receiving the same benefit as the custodian at Waitley Elementary. Um, one of the biggest changes here is that people with part-time positions will get to receive benefits if they work at least 20 hours per week, uh, versus previously it said 30 hours. So I can think of instances where uh, this is a 12-month custodian and he wasn't receiving vacation time previously because he didn't work more than um, 30 hours. So his time is just as valuable as the full-time employee and the work he's doing is just as valuable. So we've changed that so that it matches the frontier policy. And now anyone that's a part-time 12 month employee um, with 20 hours or more will be eligible for vacation time. We also lined up the years of service and vacation. So previously at Union, after one year, you only got five days. Now we're gonna give 10 uh, if this passes. The three year was eliminated because we're meeting that in the first year. So now there's a five and a 10 year increment. Um, something that we've been doing already is allowing the administrator, so the principal in this case, and the superintendent to make discretionary decisions about giving other professional credit. So if we had a secretary come in who worked in a similar position for 10 years, we might give her um, some starting time so that she or he doesn't have to wait until after one year. It's really hard to hire people into positions without any vacation time if they want, if we want them to be of high quality and professionalism. So that's in writing now, even though it really was our practice. It hasn't impacted Waitley, but it has had some impact here at Central Office. Uh, and then the other thing is that previously Union 38 non-union personnel could not roll over their vacation time. So if the school secretary or the custodian had vacation time left at the end of the year, that was being wiped out from their PTO bank and they could not roll it over. Frontier was able to, administrators are able to, so we added that in as a benefit for those employees as well. So even though this doesn't take effect until next year, we've actually been having individual conversations with principals and other staff about rolling over for this year as well. So those are the vacation changes. Um, and then sick time, uh, Union 38, previously, if you were a part-time employee at 30 hours a week, you would only get five sick days. Again, we changed that to the 20 hours a week. Um, and they'll get 10 sick days if they're a 10 month employee and they can accumulate up to 45, 12 month employees, 
um, can accumulate up to 120 sick days. Previously, it was only 60. And this is, again, putting it in alignment with Frontier. Um, Frontier actually did not pass this at the meeting this week because they want to look further into C, which doesn't impact union employees currently. Um, but we are recommending that Frontier dropped from 150 accumulation down to 120. We want to analyze that data a little bit further and see who that impacts. The reason for that is typically when this was put in place and we're, we're keeping it moving forward is that this these classifications of employees may not necessarily have short-term disability policies. Um, those are voluntary things for them to buy. And so the town may not even offer it in Waitley. I don't know fully what their benefits are, but even if they do, um, an hourly employee, if they're not making very much money, may not want to buy a disability policy. So this would allow them if they needed to have a surgery or became ill suddenly, where they needed to be out for several months, it it kind of builds in that disability policy for them. And 120 days, six months is about the time frame of a short-term disability. So that's why we're making that change. But again, doesn't impact union. A uh, big change again to longevity for Union 38 employees. So there previously was only one longevity amount of $250 if you had 10 years of service. We are adding in or recommending to add in after 15 years and 20 years, there is another bump in longevity. And again, that matches Frontier. <clears throat> the retirement buyback, there was discrepancy here as well. Union employees were allowed to buy up to one and a half sick days per year of service. Frontier was allowed to buy back two, so we're recommending going with the higher amount for a buyback of two years of service. Um, and the other change here that doesn't impact any current employees is that we would like to cap that amount at 45 days. Um, it may not necessarily be. Um, an issue at the elementary level, but at Frontier in the past few years, we've had several central office um, non-union personnel retire, and they had significant allotments in their time bank and went out with you know, 30 plus thousand dollars of payout at retirement. And we don't wanna take that away from existing employees, so everyone will be grandfathered in, but much like we're trying to do with the teacher contract um, for the union schools is, make it so that it's reasonable and affordable for each school district. So um, that's why we're proposing that change be put in place. So technically, I'll take some questions, but one more piece, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. One more thing is that technically, this would be the first read through of, oh, hi Darius. <laughs> this would be the first read through of the policy and you actually get another read through if you wanna wait until September to vote we would be looking to go back retroactively and have it approved to July 1st. There's no direct impact other than um, that longevity piece. You do have some folks that have been here at that um, larger time frame, so they would be eligible for the larger amount over the 250. Someone might be eligible for the 500 and someone else for the $750 longevity benefit. Um, so that would be the only impact at the moment. Sunderland and uh, who else do we already have this week? Deerfield? Deerfield already approved this. They did not feel like they needed to wait for another reading, but you do have that option if you want to um, take the time and review further. I think the, uh, the other, we may have said at the beginning, you only took, I think this impacts four employees at Wheatley. Is that correct? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. Right, you have two custodial, two cafeteria. Yeah, it's the other, they're part time, yep. And then two. Um, Those are the two I missed, yep. Yeah. I can take questions if you have them. Um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Maureen. I was just gonna say, did you say those employees that were affected, how, how that was? going to be um, dealt with. I'm sorry if I missed what you was, what you said about that. If you don't vote on this today, the only thing that would be impacted is that longevity benefit if you wait until September. And I actually don't know if Brenda pays that through payroll in the summer months or if she waits until September. Um, but if it is paid in the summer months, we would hold that. It's a one-time lump sum payment. We could pay the 250 that they're already receiving and then do a retroactive payment for the difference. Okay, I, I don't have any questions. 
I don't either. Uh, I think it makes sense to do it. I'll make a motion to accept the new handbook, revis, revi, revised handbook. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I told Darius that I told Darius in a text message that Shelly was doing great and he didn't have to come on. And he said to me, Well, as long as she can tell the same jokes I did the last couple of meetings. <laughs> okay, my, moving along. Making it look easy. Uh, we're at the Juneteenth holiday. Um, I don't know if there needs to be any discussion. I think we discussed this a couple meetings ago. Does any have, anyone have any questions or comments, or does um, Darius or Shelley have anything to say about it? Just that we're looking to put this in for next year. Um, even though we haven't reached Juneteenth this year, we're, we're planning this for the FY22. Um, yeah, I think straightforward. It's a straightforward thing to do. Okay. And in, in the unions, we will bargain it next year. Uh, it'll probably be on our on our list of things to be able to offer them, um, and as well. So, yeah, I make a, I make a motion to accept the new holiday. Second. All in favor? Okay. So now we are at the reports. Um, as the chair. Um, and you know, school committee, I, I would just like to thank all of you guys, all the staff, the principal, the superintendent, Shelly, everybody, the teachers, the IAs, the custodial staff, Mary, Kathy, everybody. Um, you guys have had an did an incredible job this year. Um, it was not easy. It's been more than a year. And um I think you guys did great and it wasn't always easy and a lot of time put in and thought. So thank you very much. Um, I also want to say congratulations to the sixth graders who are graduating tonight. Um, and that's all, that's all I have for the chair and for the collaborative. I missed the last meeting, but we did have interviews. It was down to the final two candidates. Um, Karen Reuter, who was the interim director, she's and she's the deputy director, and it was between her and Dr. Todd Gazda, who's the superintendent of schools for the Ludlow schools, and it was really a hard decision. They were really both really good candidates, and there was some discussion after, but Todd um, got the vote to be hired, and then I don't know what happened at the next meeting if because he, he has to be offered the job and accepted and then they have to negotiate his contract. So I'm assuming that was all good. And that's all I've got. Um, now we're on to Chrissy. Can I just jump in, can I jump oh, in real quick? Sure. I, just, I just want to say, you know, I can't wait until next September when we can get all back in person and, you know, I only go on it for these meetings like this. And some of you guys are on it all the time. It would just drive me crazy, just like it probably drove the kids crazy. But I'm, I'm really happy that we can get back together no, pretty much normal in September. But, you know, you know, I, I just hate, you know, right, I'm in my work clothes right now. And normally I would be dressed up to go to a, a school committee meeting. But if that's a benefit of not dressing up, I could have said I'm in my underwear, but I'm not. You know. <laughs> so, Christy, yes. I'm going to leave it up to you now. Go ahead. How do I, I, I agree? How do I follow up a comment about, <laughs> about that? Um, I'm going to I'm going to make it short and sweet in the interest of making sure that um, we can attend the uh, festivities coming up. I would just like to offer my sincere appreciation for everything that the Waitley School Committee and the Waitley community at large have done to get us through this most difficult and unusual year. Despite the circumstances, we had a successful year due in large part to the support we received. 
and tonight we will celebrate our sixth grade students who have demonstrated resilience, compassion, and perseverance throughout this year. I have no doubt that they will always remember the 2020-21 school year and carry with them the valuable lessons they learned from it. Thank you. Thanks, Chrissy, for all your hard work. Okay, uh, Darius, do you have anything for us? No report, just an echo of the thanks and um, just pulling together as a community to get through this year. I think we're all ready for a break, but at the same time, it's a good time to pause and reflect that we did accomplish. And even when we disagreed at times, we all kind of got to a, a positive end for the kids here. Um, so thank you all the teachers and, and staff um, at the ground level. Thank you to the parents. Uh, made all those adjustments we asked them to make along the way. And then, as I said in the previous meetings, and if we didn't have a, such a well-functioning school committee, it could have been even, it could have been a very, um, even more difficult time if we worked well together to get what we need to get done. So thank you all as well. And thank you to the administration. Chrissy, you did a great job. She went above and beyond. You guys have, the community has no idea how much money she has saved the district because she did everything herself. Uh, she was a full-time subs. She was a full-time, you know, she did it all. Um, you know, if, if I saw her cleaning, scrubbing the floors, if I walked in, I wouldn't even have bat an eye because that would be something she would do to make sure the kids were ready to go. So thank you, Chris, for all your work as well. Um, it was it was well worth it. Every We made it through this year, everyone healthy, everyone safe, and that was... That was really the big goal, given where we were at in the in the, in the fall. So, it's nice to be on this side to see that all that work that we did actually did pay off. Um, I also I forgot when I was thanking everybody. I forgot to thank the kids and the families um, who all were instrumental in making it successful as well, and for school committee. We uh, we hung in there too. Anyway, I hope everyone has a great summer. Are we going to have to meet in August at all for whatever reason, Darius? I know at Frontier we might have to, but yeah, it, there's a chance. I, I don't, you know, we don't know what the parameters are for the fall yet. Um, if we're going to have to do anything significant, and so, you know, if we do meet, it would be, um, you know, it'd probably be the week before school starts or the week school starts. You know. Um, I'll have to see. We have to do a joint meeting for 38 if it's just simple stuff, if it's simple mask things or whatever. You know, I'm not going to try to force it just so that we can get together so I can see your faces. Uh, but there's something <laughs> that I have to make a decision on. Uh, I'll figure out a way to do it because there's no way you can do a, a school committee meeting that's not an emergency until the third week, until after the third week of August or, you know, that kind of thing because everybody just has so many vacations and stuff. So I'm cognizant of that as well. So so hopefully not, but if we have to, it'll be it maybe have to be a joint meeting or, or you know, it depends on if we have to have a policy in place. I don't think we're gonna have to though. We'll see. All right. I'll make a motion to adjourn, Madam Chairman. Chairman. I will second that. All right, all in favor. Aye. Have a great summer. Have a great summer, everybody. Take Bye. care. <laughs>